Well, he's the co-host of First Things First, and he's my friend, and we mostly disagree on stuff. Uh, so I want to I want to hear his takes this week. My buddy Nick Wright. So, What's up, uh, Colin? listen, I might live in Los Angeles and have excellent sourcing within certain organizations, but the Rams have some unsolvable issues. I think oh, yeah. eventually. People return, they're okay. Do you think the Super Bowl champs' issues are solvable? Oh, not realistically, no. I Listen, I think the, the banners hang forever and they'll be champions forever, but they weren't the best team in football last year. They weren't some overwhelming juggernaut. They got hot at the right time. They had the good fortune of getting to play Jimmy Garoppolo, your guy, in the playoffs. <laughs> and listen, and when NFL history is done, Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey deserve rings. And they carry, you know, they carried them to that. And Stafford was quite good in the big spots last year. But Stafford, like he did last year, this year, is leading the league in, in, in interceptions. Yes. Stafford, like happened last year, when he is pressured, is a totally different guy. But unlike last year, he is now pressured quite often. You add to the fact that they have only one guy on offense that scares you. And credit to Cooper Cup, everyone knows he's their only option, and he is still getting his numbers. Even if they were to bring back Odell, I don't think that solves things. I think that we look at the Cowboys, and I don't think you or I think the Cowboys are a juggernaut. They are a limited offense with an outstanding defense. And I don't think you or I would be shocked if the Cowboys with Cooper Rush beat them on Sunday. I'm not saying I'd pick them, but I wouldn't be. I heard you say you'd take the Cowboys plus the points. I think that's probably the smart side. So, yeah, I I think the Rams are a team that won a Super Bowl and deserves credit. But it was not the beginning of some Rams era, and they put all their chips in for that Super Bowl, and they cashed them in. But I think it might be hard sledding for them, not just the rest of this year, but the next few years, because they don't have many assets to replenish that roster. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, listen, you know I like Buffalo a lot, but eventually, oh, yeah. eventually, Everyone. you see flaws. And oh. I've been on this now for a couple of years. We've talked about this on the phone, on the show. Defensive coaches don't have the feel for offense. I mean, Andy Reid rebuilt an O-line in an hour. Andy Reid loses yep. Tyreek. He rebuilds it in an hour. Sean McDermott hasn't built a running game in six years. I do see it now as a problem where they get a lead late, and they and if Josh Allen throws an incompletion punt, it's the other team. They can't kill the clock like Kansas City can do, like last year Tampa could do, like last year. So I am starting yep. to see a team I don't trust in close games. Is that reasonable? Yeah, I think it's totally reasonable. And I listen, I know that, you know, I caught a lot of flack this early this week because I made the point that Buffalo hadn't won a close game in two years, and then they finally won one. But finally winning one does not answer the question as to what the issues in those spots had been. I think you key on it, but I actually think it's a bigger problem than that because Josh Allen is, without a doubt, one of the five best quarterbacks in football. They also, despite all the injuries, have an awesome defense. Yes. But on offense... They, they do have a running game, but the running game is Josh Allen. Yep. And I think that is incredibly risky. And I think that Ken Dorsey and Sean McDermott need to talk to each other and say, guys, we, we can't – I don't care that he is the most physically imposing quarterback in league history other than Cam Newton. We cannot – use him as our primary running back there it's just too risky there is a reason that Patrick Mahomes doesn't do quarterback sneaks even anymore their backup tight end does yeah the best assets in the it's different for Lamar because if you take the running away Lamar is a totally different player for a guy like Allen or Mahomes who if they never run the football have the talent to be one of the very, very best quarterbacks in the league, you can't be putting him in jeopardy like this. Like, injuries happen, and some of them are unpredictable. But if I were to tell you that Josh Allen's going to get dinged, especially now that the NFL is going to have a much stricter hand with, you are out for the game if you look like you might possibly have a concussion. They've got to be careful with them using him yep. as their running back when he's not their running back. I totally agree with that. Yeah, by the way, Big Ben and Cam, Newton both had defensive head coaches yeah. didn't go I mean literally just leaned on that and McDermott's leaning on it 
You're going to see the same thing at 31-32. He's going to go off a cliff where Mahomes is going to be handing off, sitting back, better protection, better O lines in a run game. So um, I said earlier, the Packers aren't going to go Favre to Rodgers to another legend. It's not going to happen. It's unbelievable that the Colts got luck after Peyton Manning. It doesn't yep. happen. Denver and Miami are still trying to find a Marino Elway. So, yeah. you know, Aaron, realistically, two years for sure he's playing. Take a big swing. One. Go get OBJ. That's my take. How's it land for you? Oh, uh, lands for, you know, the only time I heard someone say that better was Nick Wright six months ago. <laughs> I mean, my God, Colin. <laughs> I mean, give give a guy some credit. Yeah, listen, this is where Odell should go. Now, I don't know. I heard J-Mac talking about if Odell's going to be able to perform in the cold. I think he's going to be able to perform in the cold. I don't know if he wants to go to the cold. I don't know if that's where he will choose to go. But Aaron should be recruiting him. Yes. Because right now the Packers flatly do not have enough. That's right. The Packers, the, the, they have a good defense. They have a good running game. But the idea that the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback are going to be get to a Super Bowl, which is the standard for them this year, the expect after back-to-back -back conference championship games, without the reason they got there being Aaron Rodgers in the in the passing game, it's nonsense. They don't have a dominant, overwhelming defense, and they don't have a dominant, overwhelming running game. Those two things need to complement what has to be their best feature, which is what Aaron Rodgers can do. And right now, it's a whole hell of a lot of Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. Yeah. And that's not good. No. And that's nothing against Alan Lazard or Randall Cobb. So, yes, I think that that is the perfect spot for Odell. And I've said it for quite some time. And one other thing about Odell, I heard on the broadcast, Buck and Aikman do an excellent job, even though now they're at the other network, still do a great job. They were talking about how the Rams, oh, the Rams kept Odell's locker and the Rams won Odell back. If I'm Odell, there is one team in the league that I would have expected to sign me even though I'm not going to be available until week 10. The team I helped win a Super Bowl for. <laughs> if there was any team in the league that right. should have given him one year, eight million, and said, like Shaq talked about, you got hurt on company time, rehab on company time, it would be the Rams. So I, if I were Odell, I would feel some type of way about the fact, well, I get why Green Bay or Baltimore or whomever wants to wait until I'm healthy. But if you guys want me so badly, then sign me. Start paying me now. So I, for, for that reason, I'm not so certain Odell is as interested in going back to the Rams as I think the Rams hope he is. But two minutes left. I'm interested on your take. Um, what is Cooper Rush's success said to you about Dak, the Cowboys, and Cooper Rush? Well, so I, I heard you talking about how it, the, you know, a lot of Dak's success has kind of been system dependent. And I agree with that to a degree. Obviously, Dak is a far better player than Cooper Rush. I think that the, a lot of his success has been based on who they've played, the fact that they have not been. You, you say this all the time, Colin, and this I'll give you credit for. The best quarterbacks in the league are the ones who, when the other team knows you have to throw, can still make the throw. What has really benefited Cooper Rush is that he hasn't been in any situations late in the game where the other team knows he has to throw. He's doing so much of his damage early in game or on first downs, which are the most beneficial situations. But what I will tell you is this, and this is going to sound unpopular and it's going to sound hot takey, but I know I'm right. The single best thing for Dak Prescott is for Cooper Rush to have a three-interception game against the Rams. Jerry Jones is too much media. And the, we talk about the Cowboys on this network and every network far too often for Cooper Rush, you know, through, by some miracle to go undefeated and then have Dak come back in because Dak's not going to go undefeated. That's right. And so d d do you remember Mike White for a moment yeah. with the Jets? He had yeah. that 400-yard game. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, oh, my goodness. What about Zach Wilson? You know the best thing to happen to Zach Wilson Two weeks later, Mike White threw four <laughs> interceptions. And everyone's like, okay, we can all calm down. Right. It wouldn't have been great for Zach Wilson if Mike White had come back out, had a 300-yard game, That's and right. then Zach gets the job. Yeah. So I, I, I know the Cowboys are trying to get playoff positioning, all of this. Dak needs Cooper to have a terrible game to silence all of what I think is nonsense, the idea that Cooper and Dak Prescott should be in some quarterback controversy. Yeah, I, I, Dak's better. He's more expensive. He's more experienced. He's more athletic. Um, good stuff, buddy. Nick Wright, first things first after our show. Give it a watch. A lot of fun. Guys get along. Chemistry's great. Good seeing you.
Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.